Friends, our second scripture this day comes to us from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 42 through 47. Let us listen again for what God is saying to God's church. The early Christians devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. Awe came upon everyone because many wonders and signs were being done by the apostles. All who believed were together and had all things in common. They would sell their possessions and goods and distribute the proceeds to all as any had need. Day by day, as they spent much time together in the temple, they broke bread at home and ate their food with glad and generous hearts, praising God and having the goodwill of all the people. And day by day, the Lord added to their number those who were being saved. Friends, holy wisdom, holy word. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Let us pray. O Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Yesterday, Trisha and I turned on the air conditioning at our home. As those of you who live in Lexington know, yesterday was one of the few days we've had so far this year where we've had a temperature go up into the 80s. And as I will admit, I am very particular about the temperature in my home. I went to turn on the air conditioning, but nothing happened. I checked all the necessary things. I made sure that our air filter had been changed recently. And I went to the fuse box to make sure that I hadn't tripped the breaker, but everything looked fine. The last thing that I thought that I would need to do is to see if the batteries needed to be, re to, uh, be replaced in the thermostat. So I went to the garage, uh, got my flathead screwdriver, and then went back into the hallway to insert it into the, it's, one, it's a very old thermostat. I have to insert the screwdriver into two little holes to release the front cover of the thermostat. I replaced it with two AA batteries, and then after a few seconds of devout prayer, still nothing happened. Finally, I noticed a little button that can only be accessed when the cover of the thermostat is removed. It simply said, reset. I pressed it, and the air conditioning in all its cool and refreshing glory started immediately. So the moral of the story, we all need to press the reset button from time to time. Who knows how long it had been since that particular reset button had been pressed. Perhaps it was long overdue for the system to restart itself to get back to the basics of what it was meant to do in the first place. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a forced reset button for all of us in one way or another. Right now, whether we wanted it or not, the reset button has been pressed, and we are reminded of what is truly most important in our lives, our family, our friends, roofs over our heads, if we're lucky enough to have one, food, fellowship, a job, if we're fortunate enough to have one, laughter, joy, nature, safety, and love. You know, the basics. And hopefully, recognizing the importance of those things in our lives has made us who call ourselves the followers of Jesus to be equally passionate about making sure that those things are realities in other people's lives too. That's what reset buttons do. And these Reset buttons tend to come in moments of crisis, and sometimes pressing the reset button is exactly what we need. 
It doesn't take a very detailed look in the history of Christianity to notice that the church tends to be most faithful to its gospel calling, not when the going is easy, but when the going is tough. In other words, when the status quo has been in place for a lengthy period of time, when being a Christian is the cool or socially accepted thing to do, in times when you couldn't be a successful business owner unless you were a giving congregant at the local downtown church, those were the moments when the church tends to get lazy and distracted. Those are the moments when the gospel gets turned into something that's more about convenience and privilege than what you and I know it's really about. But in the moments when the going is tough, in the moments when danger abounds and people are really struggling, those are the moments when the church has been most true to its gospel calling. In those moments of disorientation, the reset button has been pressed and the church abandons its gospel of convenience and privilege and shares the gospel of feeding and clothing and sheltering, caring and loving. That's what the reset button does. It reminds you and I who are the church of what's really important. It forces us to get back to the basics. Now, friends, please hear, hear me when I say that I in no way mean to make light of our current circumstances. People are suffering. Loved ones are dying. The COVID-19 crisis is perhaps our generation's biggest challenge. But what I mean to say is this. It is in our human nature to search for meaning in the midst of suffering. And I do believe that there is meaning to be found in our current circumstances, as horrible though they may be. I believe that the COVID-19 crisis is forcing congregations such as ours to get back to the basics by answering questions like, do people have food? Do they have clothing? Do they have companionship and support? Do they have a job? Do they need comfort? Now, I hope that you and I know that these questions are important at all times. But sometimes we get so bogged down with the building, we get bogged down with business as usual, and sometimes we forget that these questions are the heart of the gospel. Today's passage from the book of Acts describes what the early church looked like. The church in its earliest form. The early church was in a time of crisis. Sometimes we read this passage and we turn it into a Hallmark card as if everything was nice and rosy. But the fact of the matter was that the Christians in this time were doing something that was blatantly subversive and painfully and, and truly dangerous. It's ironic and sad, I think, that there are some folks that are protesting these days at the Capitol building in Frankfurt, saying that Christianity is somehow being oppressed by the governor's ban on mass gatherings. And I think that that's ridiculous. I think that those protesters need to read the book of Acts to learn what the oppression of Christianity really looks like. These early Christians in today's book, in today's reading, were living under constant threat of economic oppression, arrest, and detainment, and even death, just like Jesus Christ did on a cross. And yet, in the midst of this disorientation and despair, the earliest Christians gathered to follow the footsteps of their risen Christ, feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, and caring for one another. These early Christians did so by doing what the Roman Empire thought was unthinkable. They sold their possessions and goods, they distributed the proceeds to all who needed them, and held all things in common. 
like we will today, they broke bread together. And they ate with glad and generous hearts, as the text tells us, and shared concern for the common good. I hope that we take just a moment this day to appreciate how radical this was and how radical indeed it is. The Roman Empire was concerned with two things. Number one, getting bigger and stronger. And number two, by taxing its citizens to the max in order to finance their greed. But in comparison to that, the early Christians shared what they had and made sure everyone was supported and nurtured, even if it meant that they were persecuted and crucified. And here we are, albeit under very different circumstances and during a very different kind of hardship, but finding ourselves, like the early church, getting back to the basics. So my question for us this day is this. How can we resist the urge to go back to the way things were and instead position ourselves to become something new or something very old, depending on how you look at it, by renewing our focus on the basics of what it means to be a Christian community? Brene Brown, as she usually does, puts it best when she said the following recently. She says this, We will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal other than we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return to that, my friends. We are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. Friends, as Brene says, we have been given the opportunity to stitch a new garment. What shall we weave together? Shall we go back to the old structures or shall we move forward? and weave a different kind of garment, a kind of garment that the early Christians in today's passage so brilliantly wove together in the midst of such hardship and trauma. So today, let us come to this table, the Lord's table, which extends from here into your home to renew our commitment to get back to the basics of the gospel, a pure and unadulterated gospel where the weak are strengthened, the sad are comforted, the oppressed are freed, and the broken are welcomed and restored. In the name of God, the Creator, Redeemer, and Sustainer, may all of us, God's beloved children, say, Amen.